Thank you for joining me today on the Who God Says podcast. I am your host and kingdom ambassador, Ty Chandra. Hi, hi, hi. Today we have a special guest. Oh my God, he is so cool. He is a teacher and an artist. He is the host of the My Fool's Journey podcast. And he called himself a teacher of humanity. I love that so much. Mr. Jacob Gerard. Welcome. What's going on? What's the deal? What's the deal? Peace. Oh, I am so yeah. excited. Yeah, for sure. We about to cook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I love your story. We had okay. time to talk and I, you know, yeah. I love your story, but I want you to introduce yourself to the people. Tell yeah. us where did you grow up and mm. what it was like for a little teenage Jacob. Oh, teenage? Oh, wow. Okay. So <laughs> you want teenage or you want before teenage? Let's, up to let's, what you let's want? like what work part? it up to okay. Just to little Jacob and little yeah. then teenage Jacob, yeah. So prior to my teenage years, like I remember, like around from like the age of maybe about five, I can always remember being having like this uh, rebellious spirit, mm-hmm. right? Re- this rebellious spirit, like I stay getting in trouble in school, like from this early as five years old, kicked out, suspended. Moms got to come to the school, calling moms, this, that, and the third. But at, I realized like that was my, that's who I was. That was my raw energy. That was my raw spirit. Yeah. But at the time, you know, being a certain age, you don't know really how to channel it. Right. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like growing up, I always had these questions in my mind. Like I remember like like standing in my apartment complex, like looking up at the sky, like wondering like what was up there. You know what I'm saying? Like now come back full circle. I'm aiming to go up there, like past the sky. Like, you know what I'm saying? But that really, in other words, like that symbolizes like certain heights that I'm aiming towards in life. So, but I will always have questions like, like what is life? What is reality? How does that, you know, who, like, how did I get here? Like, it was just like certain thoughts I remember, like, thinking as a kid. So, but for me, it's like, I never wanted to, like, me, I'm going to do, like, I got that type of spirit. Like, I'm going to do what make me happy. I know that now. At the time, I didn't have that language. <laughs> I had, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had that type of energy. Like, I'm going to do, like, what make me happy. I'm going to do what I want to do. I want to be free. Mm-hmm. I don't like nobody. I don't want nobody telling me what to do. I'm going to run my own program. But yeah. as a kid, that's like raw energy. So if that type of energy is not like corralled and like, you know, if it, that type of energy is not corralled and like put in a certain, like if it's not controlled, if it's not fixed, mm-hmm. if it don't have no language, then it's just going to be like wildfire. And like the type <laughs> of community I grew up in, it's like, you know, it's like a wildfire like type people. Like, you know, we come from cultures and communities where it's like, if your mom at work, and your pops not around who 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 watching the yeah. kids like you know what i'm saying like so from about the age of nine like when my moms and pops got a divorce like from about the age of nine or ten that's when i really kind of like jumped off the porch because we you know jumping off the porch you kind of now you're going out there you exploring because yeah. my pops always had this energy like yeah you, know, you can't go but like you can't go to a certain part of the neighborhood and hang out right. you know so I would say from about the ages of nine, right, to about 16 is when I kind of like slowed down to, a, you know, certain stuff. You know, I spent a lot of time uh, in and out of group homes, juvenile halls, facilities. I had watched my older brother. I watched him get sent away. My pops was gone. I watched my grandpa had just passed. Like my grandpa passed like the day when I was 13, like the next the day before I like, I caught a case when I was 13 years old, mm. um, breaking an entry, you know, in my apartment complex area, stuff like that. And I had got sent away to a group home at 13 years old. So for me, I always been like independent, like always like moms again. I remember back in the days, I'm like 10 years old, nine, 10 moms, give me $20 to go <laughs> catch the bus to the movies. You know what I mean? We was rich. We was rich. Yeah, yeah come on. <laughs> Come on, yeah, you know, 20 back in them days, early 2000s, you know, I catch the bus, you know, but that's who I still am. I still do stuff like that, you know, so I've always had been like independent, but I had to grow up 
yeah. uh, fast. You know, we grew up in environments where you we got to grow up fast sometimes, right? So at 13, I was already gone uh, out the house. And, and in a lot of ancient cultures, like 13 is the age of when young men is mm-hmm. like get taken into like initiation and like yeah. learn about manhood and stuff. But seeing that in the cultures we grew up in, we don't have those kind of, uh, yeah. we don't have that type of system in place. I feel like life, I feel like the divine will always corral and do certain things that like uh, cause certain chains of events to happen to get us to a certain place. I feel yeah. like if it's meant for us to get to a certain place, uh, we're going to get to a certain place, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Through trial and error, you know? So that's, yeah. you know, so now, you know, high school years, I was 13. I went to the group home in 2007, 2008. Fast forward, I remember getting out the group home. Um, and the only reason why they let me out is I never finished no programs. I was like, a, I was one of those, like, I was one of them ch- children, or I guess you could say growing up, that was like, let's wait and see what he do. Like, we don't Ooh. know. What he, yeah, we don't know what he going to do, what he going to you know, but the that they, was all, they put uh, on scare straight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I, they was, you know what I'm saying? I was, it seemed like some of them ain't never been in the system. I was already like in the system in June. Yeah. I knew the feeling of being 13 and you can't go out the door. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got other staff, ever other uh, grown men telling you what to do. You can't do this. Can't, and I, even when I was in there, like I stayed in trouble, like. That's just, oh yeah, I just stayed in trouble. So just figuring out who I was, right? Mm-hmm. Figuring out, uh, but at the same time, expressing who I am. Like, that's that's big for me. Like, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a always express who I am, express mm-hmm. how I feel, whether it's through verbal language, whether it's through actions, whether it's through music, art, whatever. So, you know, I remember in 2008, I got out the group. They let me out the group home because I wanted to play football. Um, now I did have a, a, a prior, some prior football experience growing up. My mm-hmm. pops kept me and my brother, you know, he had us like, you know, LeVar Ball running heels and the, you know what I'm saying? So I always had like a work ethic. That's like where my work ethic come from. Like okay. that's where my drive come from. Pops had me and my brother on the back heels running in the neighborhood, running stairs, doing all type of stuff. So like that seed was planted, you know, that's where, yeah. um, you know, and I feel like you mentioned artists, like my artistry, like that energy come from like my mom. She a very creative person. I watched, I will grow up, watch her uh, decorating the house. And you know what I'm saying? She took her colors and she real cold with it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So 2008, I get out the group home and I want to play football. So I get to high school. Now, mind you, I didn't been kicked out of every type of school, three or four, five different schools growing up. I never, to this day, I never like got no, I never got a degree at any level. I never got no high school diploma. They just, I was a kid. They was like, just let him go. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're just gonna give you a certificate of completion, you know? So, uh, you know, so I got to high school and like I was used to being in like when I was in a group home, like we was in classroom downstairs in the basement, like, Ooh. like they didn't how I was like with my file, like I had uh, I was classified quote unquote as a special ed student because of my behavior, yeah. and you know what I'm saying, and other factors as well. Um, so I remember getting out the group home and going. Out, imagine getting out of the group home, right, and your school career is rocky, you know, from elementary to middle school. And then, and then, um, you know, you just get thrown into like this public high school, mm. you know what I'm saying? For me, that was like a whole, like, that was like a whole different world, but mm. I'm, I'm watching all the, like my homies and like, I'm watching all them, like they running around, they ball, they playing football, they feel me, they getting all the girls and this, that, and the third. So to me, in my mind, like, that's like the cool thing, mm. but even though like, which who you see today, like the energy I'm expressing now, this is like not who I was. I was more like reserved, mm-hmm. more shy, always outgoing, but like it's that my confidence and all that wasn't mm-hmm. there. And and I'm that's aspects I'm still working on, you know what I mean? But I was just more like kind of laid back. I ain't gonna say I was like follower of the crowd, nah, because I always ran my own program. I had certain friends who I wouldn't get in trouble with, and then I had friends who I would get in trouble with. You know what I'm saying? So high school, they put me like, they, you know, they really like took a, I was like one of them children or kids, teenagers or whatever, where people just took a chance on, but yeah. nobody, it was always up to me though. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I wasn't no, 
I've reached, I had reached to aspects during my teen years where I was on. I was never a crash, a full out, you know, the term when I say like a crash out, you ever hear that term? Like a no. crash out dummy. So, oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Like somebody that's just out there wilding. He ain't yeah. caring about nothing. He was just reckless. Mm-hmm. I'll never, I never will classify myself as a crash out dummy, but I would, I would say I had crash out moments growing up yeah. as a teenager. Yeah. Reckless so, tendencies. yeah. Yeah. Reckless tendencies. You know what I mean? So, you still trying to figure it out. Like, like I'm coming home, I'm 15, I'm sure I'm gonna figure it out. They put me in special ed. But I remember this one lady was telling me one day, she was like, she was in my, what they refer to as an IEP meeting. Mm-hmm. She was like, you smart. Like, you know what I'm saying? But when, when I hear this, like, I don't really know like what she talking about. I'm just like, mm-hmm. I'm letting everybody make decisions for me. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm doing what I want to do, but I'm like letting other people guide me and you got my, mind you i don't know nothing about who i am i don't know you know what i'm saying i'm just going with the program yeah. so football was kind of like you know uh, i balanced i did i balanced you can say during high school i balanced uh football in school to a degree but i still had my foot like kind of like in the trouble lane you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying so i remember being like 15 you know and like i come from the type of neighborhood it's like if you want to hang outside like you got to prove your, you got to prove that you can hang. You got to prove that you can be. So I never had the spirit like where I always, like I had to go on my way to prove some, but I did have a spirit. Like I can hold, like I'm gonna hold my own, mm-hmm. you know? So I remember being like 15 and then telling mom, well, not telling my mom, but I just, I, I didn't like going to my mom, asking her for like money and stuff like that. And I was like, I've always been independent. I always wanted to go out and get it on my own and pave away for my own. And I'm still the same way. So, you know, I got into, you know, so street activity, selling dope by my mama house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, at a young age, um, just doing stupid stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like when I see these young brothers out here now, like I understand the mindset. I understand, you know, we, I was at the age where we listened to the music and you know, we get inspired by the music or we out really trying to live and what we hearing, you know what I'm saying? Right. So just like I said, no real, and then that's your environment. Like that's the environment. Like when you see somebody come through in a, a baby blue Benz, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he hop out and he got all the, you know what I'm saying? Like in my mind, that was like success to me at the time. You feel me? That yep. was like success to me. Like, I'm like, man, that, you know, um, Man, like, man, that's what I, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I want. Cause for me, I didn't see no big picture. Like now I can yeah. see a big picture. I, I wasn't no vision. I was always a visionary, but it wasn't executed. So for me, I'm like, man, that's what I want. And the way I am, if I want something, I'm going to go get it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you no know, questions asked, you know, so kind of like some of my, my teenage years, uh, I had got in trouble one more time when I had turned 16. Mm-hmm. Right. I actually I the high school that I was out, my probation officer, um, he had took me out myself because I went to high school starting my, my sophomore year. He took me out. Right. And I'm speaking on this because it's kind of like key moments. Right. Yeah. Um, he had took me out of the high school and put me in what they referred to as like a continuation school, okay. um, like a third party high school where, you know, you go to school with other individuals like yourself. <laughs> uh, but I had already went to that school when I was 12, okay. you know, but I, yeah, now I was back, you know, so. Um, fast forward, my probation officer, he's like, look, they not going to kick you out, but I'm going to take you out. So they don't kick you out. Okay. So when I see st- like now looking back at my life, when I see stuff like that, I'm like, man, that was the universe. Like always protecting me, like always, you know what I'm saying? Like having their hands on me. Cause I can think me and my mom were just talking about something the other day. And I was like, man, I could think about, I could think of so many times where situations I'm like, I didn't care if I got out of them or not, but you know, the universe knew the big picture. The divine knew the big picture. Like, now nah, we're going to protect you. So in my mind, I'm thinking I'm just smooth. I'm thinking I'm slick. I'm thinking I'm getting away with something. Like, nah, now, nah, you is blessed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you was being pro- divinely protected. You know what I mean? So you can do certain things in the future. Because I didn't see individuals, like, get out there. They one shot. You know what I'm saying? They get out there and do something one time, and they ruin their whole life. So now I give thanks that I wasn't, you know, one of those individuals. So 16 years old, that was the last time I ever had went to juvenile hall. And football was, like, my first love. That was my first passion. But 
I was doing that kind of like one foot in, one foot out. Yeah. So I remember the last time I ever like got in trouble with the law or anything, I was six. Well, yeah, I was 16. And I remember the judge, this was like a cold moment in my life. Like you sitting in the courtroom, you know, and then the judge like lean over the, the, uh, the balcony thing. And he go, if I see you again, like, you know what I'm saying? He don't even know me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't even know me. You only know me based off this file. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like these papers that you got, like, you only know me based off this file, but he like, if I see you again, like that's it for you. They were, they, they refer, they have a term referred to as juvenile life. Yep. Like mm-hmm. where you, you know, you max out, you know what's going on. You oh, max yeah. out till you 18. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know where some they was place, going. Man, some place. Yeah, yeah. Some place. You're like 20 and 21 now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. See, you oh, know gosh. what's going on. You out there in that state of Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. They had put you under the jail out there. <laughs> all the way under that thing and bury you. <laughs> you know, so when I heard that, I'm like, ooh. I got to try to change something. So that was like the first time I was like, all right, I got to try to do something different. Yeah. So even though I didn't do nothing, I did do something different, but I was a little bit more what they refer to as mindfulness, yeah. <laughs> but it was mindfulness in another way where you still trying to run your own program. But right. still, I, I had to like, man, I got to think a little bit. I can't just be out here. You know, we are proactive people. You know, I mean, excuse me, we are reactive people. Yeah. So we, sometimes we just do stuff. And we don't really think about like what we doing. So like I said, I know what these youngsters is going through. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you're in it. If you don't got nobody like really in your ear, like guiding you and saying, well, you do kind of, but you ain't trying to hear all that. Like sometimes, right. you know, but I'm saying like, sometimes it takes somebody to really get, get up on you close and personal and be like, look, this is, this is, let me show you something different. And I did have that later on, like down, mm-hmm. you know, in certain aspects, I'll talk about it. So, um, so I'm like, I got to do something different. And then I had got in trouble actually one more time. But the the divine blessed me again. I got pulled over with some homies. I'm no, I'm in an environment I know I shouldn't be in. And I'm on what they refer to as a search and seizure probation. Meaning like anytime they see you, they can be like, hey, come here, Gerard, mm-hmm. like search you. So I got searched and I had got caught with some like some narcotics, some drugs on me. And they took me to the police station um, and then they called. And I'm just in there for hours. And I'm just, I remember just sitting in this room like, dang, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what's about to happen. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, but football, I did kind of start caring about football a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I got to try to do something different, you know, but, you know, so then they, like, they came and got me out the room. They said, your mom, your parents here to get you. I'm like, huh? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like my parents, my mom here to get me. I don't know what happened. Somebody worked some some magic in the background, pulled some strings, but I had came home. So fast forward, I'm not gonna say that I changed right away, but what was a turning point? What was a turning point for me? Really? Hold on. That's so that's kind of like my team. I don't. I know. I keep going. I don't know if you had any questions. Okay. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, I keep I just cooking like around. To... <laughs> yeah, I keep going. <laughs> If you're flowing, we can flow, but I nah, just it's up to you. Um, I want to I want to give you some time coming there because you might not. Yeah, which is it's a lot. <laughs> Hi everyone, join the Kingdom Fanatics community, get exclusive content, green room access with our guests, and more. Visit our website at whogodsays.com. Like and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We greatly appreciate your love and support. To find all information on joining our community, being a guest on the show, donating on our PayPal donation page, and more, visit us at whogodsays.com. Now back to the show. Yeah, it's yeah. A lot. I, I, you know, I hear you bring up Divine and everything. Uh, um, it, it makes me kind of wonder, like, I know mm. you said you wasn't really worried about that back then. Mm. Um but it makes me kind of wonder if you had anybody in your life that was spiritual at that time um, mm. that you can kind of say, well, yeah, she used to do or he used to do, yeah. you know, like maybe your mom, your grandmother or somebody in the neighborhood that would probably kind of yeah. so, so let me say your interest. For sure. So let me say this. When we talked about this the other day when we did the meet and greet. Mm-hmm. So for me, I'm not big on labels. So. I'm not gonna call myself uh, a what, what a spiritual. Uh, mm-hmm. what, what's the term? Uh, 
uh, are you spiritual? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I say I'm spiritual, but I don't say that I'm religious. I'm not yeah. religious. So, yeah. so, I'm, and I'm gonna break it. I'm gonna break it all down. So, mm -hmm. uh, it's something you said that just triggers something in me. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't, me personally, just for the, you know, the spiritualists and stuff out there and or mm -hmm. that whole conversation, because me, I don't like to be put in no box. Mm -hmm. I like to, if I'm going to be put in a box, it's going to be a box I create and I, that I know how to get in and out of. <laughs> you feel me? So for me, I like to say, they ask me like, what's your religion? So for me, I do have a religion, but my religion is the process of relinking back to myself, my higher self, mm -hmm. my true self. So if we want to refer to that as a, a certain higher way of thinking, or here's a good word, a key word, knowledge of self, learning and understanding who I am. Yeah. So my religion is self and who I am and learning about who I am, uh, my potential, um, my past, present and future, maybe from a past life. You know what I'm saying? Certain things that is meant for me to do in this life. And I'm still unraveling that file. You know, learning different stuff about myself every day, certain habits, mm -hmm. certain positive things about myself, certain negative things, certain good habits, bad, everything. So my religion is self. Mm -hmm. Now to go forward, to answer your question, oh yeah, Grams, what my Grams used to have us praying. You know, my grandma from Baton Rouge, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so when they came here in the 60s, my grandma, well, she got Jesus on the wall and everything. So not... Nah, she had us like when we'd go over to my grandmother's house. Um, uh, she had she had me and my brother like at night before we go to bed saying the Our Father prayer. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, but we laughing and playing. Like, you know, we're not really taking it serious. So I I've had some church experience growing up, but for me it was just kind of like I'm just here. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't think it was like a real um, emotional attachment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But for me. Like it's a lot of for like as far as like religion, like it's a lot of good in all religions. For me, I study and look at all the different religions. It's things that I take from the Bible and apply it to my life. It's mm -hmm. things that I take from the Quran, Buddhism, this religion, that religion. Yeah, I was like, gonna ask you like, where do you yeah. kind of look to? Yeah, um, when you said you you knowledge of self and and mm -hmm. um getting the yeah. high, higher awareness of yourself and things like that. Yeah. I was going to ask you, like, where do you look to? Where do you get this this mm. guidance? Or what kind of um, what kind of things do you do that kind of brings you to a, 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 a position of peace, you know? Oh, oh well, man, for, for starters, and this is just like the the the, the doorway or I, sh I should say the first frontier um, meditation. When I got introduced to meditation, like how, like all the thing I was saying now, that kind of came later mm -hmm. when I was 22 and I got into um, meditation. So meditation, um, that bring me peace, uh, solitude, <laughs> right? Uh, you can't get to know yourself. You around, you around everybody, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of solitude, meditation, um, and looking at the different religions because all the different religions that man has passed through. And when I say man, I do mean man and women. Mm -hmm. um, that we've passed through as humanity, we have to pass through all these different stages of, you know, the times of the Bible or the Quran, this, that, and the third, Buddhism, whatever. It's all really one. But at the same time, we have to pass through all these things for us to evolve, right? And also my mentor has played a, um, a major role in my life, right? My mentor, I met him later on down the road. We can talk about that later if you still have any uh, other questions. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to get too far. I didn't want to get to that part yet. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get there though. <laughs> okay. But so I yeah, now nah, um... nah, meditation is a big, I've been meditating for going on like 10 years now. So okay. that, um, yeah, that has helped me um, a lot of writing. And then those are like the more practical tools, but my experiences, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like my relationship with the divine, you know what I'm saying? Cause the way I look at it, it's only one higher power. Some people may say, God, Allah, Jah, Yahweh. My thing is like, it's all based off the same principle. So if a person say um, they speak affirmations and praying, that's the same thing to me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you taking words, you are the words from the eternal, you putting them into the atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, you putting it into the ethers. So my grandmother watching her, you know, my pops tried to have us go to church a few times. But like I said, that was never like really a reality for me personally. Yeah. Um, but it was good to come back around full circle and understand 
certain things. Because like I said, it's a lot of things in the Bible that's good. And as far as religion, my thing is like this. Whatever religion a, a person identifies with or whatever, mm-hmm. or whatever they call themselves, if it's good and it's causing good in the world and it's causing that individual to put out good, not perfect, nobody got to be perfect. But if it's causing that individual to you know, put out good into the world, then it must be a good religion. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> if it's a good, hey, hey, if if that tree bears good fruit, then it must be the true, but the tree must be good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so for me, it's like, it's not really rocket science. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, but that to answer your question, like, yeah. And so my, like I said, my grandmother, um, you know, and all that, you know, so okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, I asked because when you oh, tell yeah. me your story and, um, you know, yeah. you talk about the people that kind of, Mm. taking chances on you and things like that now again i'm spiritual and i believe in god is the one true god and yeah he has many names yahweh yeah for sure Um, it's all one uh, (laughs) his son is jesus christ and that's my lord and savior that's right it's peace um, when you when you talk about your experiences and how people have taken chances on you and like things happen you're like why did how this happened? How yeah? How how I get arrested? And y'all saying my parents coming pick me up? Yeah. You know, for me, I would say that even though you didn't want it, <laughs> God mm. was already instilled in you from mm. the, there was someone who made sure you were introduced to that when for you sure. were little. Yeah. Um, and I've always said there was a covering that was put, placed on you. A lot of times we don't understand the covering. Say that, say that word again. Oh, it's covenant. Okay, I got covering. you. Covering. Yep. I got you. I got yeah. you. Yeah. We don't understand okay, it. Yeah. You know, um, our grandparents, there could be people in mm. our neighborhood. That's why I was asking that, you know, people in the neighborhood. Um, there there are ways that God would use people to make sure that mm. you're covered because he got to use you for something later that's on. That's peace. Yeah, that's right. So I, I just, I, I love how mm. you're just so authentic and calm and and okay with sharing the things that you went through. And I mean, a lot of times people will look at us because I mean, we grew up in pretty much the same atmosphere Mm -hmm. and people, if we were to talk about it all the time, Mm -hmm. people probably be like, are you okay? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you need some help. You need some, you know, Um, but I appreciate you being open and talking about it because it helps people, you know, no matter what your spiritual beliefs are, no matter what my spiritual beliefs are or anyone right. else's, having yeah. someone to say, hey, I went through going in and out of group homes. Like mm-hmm. I was that kid that was at home and mom was at work, dad was at work and I had to make do. Somebody can listen to that and say, well, you know what? I was like that too. Yeah. And you know, there's nothing wrong with me. Now, it's for crazy. me, I was... Some people call them key kids, uh-huh. but I was like the little mom in the house. Like my, okay. my I was uh, raised by a single father and mm. I was the oldest child in home. So I had to come home from school and help fix dinner, wash oh, wow. clothes. You were the oldest home. sibling? Oldest one in the house. Oh, wow. Okay. So, and I had to go and make sure um, if my dad was like, he left the envelope to pay the light bill. Well, I had to go walk yeah. to the highway yeah. And if anybody know anything about New Orleans, I lived in Holly Grove. So I lived okay. in the back yeah. of Holly Grove and I had to yeah, walk all the way sure. up to the front to oh, go wow. pay light bills and stuff. So it was like, yeah. um, it was a lot of things I had to experience. Then mm. I said I was adjacent to the drug game because I wasn't in that. Right. My dad didn't want me to be a part of it, but there were family members who were a right. part of it. And mm-hmm. so I understand a lot of the things that you were saying. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. I sense that though. Yeah, you know, we come. I mean, we come from the same. I mean, we the same people. Like, really, yeah. you know, we talk culturally. Totally you know, true. even if you're from the south and I'm from California, it's like, you know what I'm saying? A yeah. rose by another name still smell the same. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, you know, so nah, definitely, yeah, nah, that's peace. You know what I mean? But just having you here to talk about that uh-huh. and talk about your experiences, I know there's somebody who's like. Yeah. Children are my heart. Like I love children. Mm-hmm. And I always want to reach children mm. just so they can get a better understanding. Because when we're young, we're like, we know everything. Yeah. At least we think we do. 
Right. And <laughs> then when we grow up, we saw those light bulbs start coming on. You're man, like, yeah, you sure. ain't know nothing. <laughs> nothing, yeah. Man. You didn't know nothing. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you about football because you said football was like your first love and everything. Okay. Um, when you play football, you played at school or you played like in the neighborhood or a park or something. <laughs> so, uh, so my I played I played for high school like like mm-hmm. I played for high school for three years, really like two years. Mm-hmm. Um, so football was like football was the first thing, like the first um, was like the first tool to show me. Like that one to care about something outside of myself, mm-hmm. uh, even though I was, you know, still kind of rough around the edges or whatever. Uh, teamwork, yeah. it gave me structure. So yeah. I played, you know, it gave me that structure, that discipline. Like, so now it's like after school, like, like, let me say this. I was the type of kid, honestly, like I was not, I'm not, I, I was never slow. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I did stupid stuff. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> I was the type like, I would be at class. I would. I didn't like miss school and stuff. Like right. I'd be in class every day on time. Sometimes 10, 15 minutes early. Even though I had drugs, I had dope on me. But <laughs> I was in class like every right. day. Like you know what I'm saying. Like because um, I knew at one I had to show up. You know what I'm saying? Because I get in trouble. But um, I would be at practice. You know what I'm saying? Like it taught me like structure. So football was like. I couldn't just like after school go back to the hood. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I had to like go to practice. Yeah. So that taught me like how to be somewhere on time, you know, work ethic, you know what I'm saying? Like working out, getting in shape, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it taught me all that. It taught me like discipline in a way. Yeah. Um, and I had already had so much discipline and stuff growing up, like when coaches and stuff are like, like, you know, it never like really bothered me. Like when coaches would say little stuff or like push me this, that, and the third. So um, so then football, then from high school, uh, oh, did you have an, I don't know if you had a follow-up question. Cause, oh, okay. All right. Let me know. <laughs> you better let me know. Shit. Hey, we'll be, man, you better let me know some. So, 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 so football. So when I had turned 18, excuse me, 17, I was like 17, getting ready to go on 18. Another key moment in my life. Like I remember, I remember being like 17. And then now, like, I'm at the point where, like, I'm kind of like, like, football is something I want to do beyond high school, mm-hmm. right? I'm like, this is something, like, okay, I can see myself doing this, right? I mean, you you know, you're from Louisiana. You come from a big football state. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what's going on, LSU yep. right down the street, you know what I mean? <laughs> Louisiana, Monroe, you, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, the yeah, the Saints, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um uh, I remember being 17 and I'm like, I remember like sitting in like when I was in some teacher class one day, it wasn't like an official class, but it was like a spot we'll always go to, yeah. um, you know, and just kind of hang out. And I remember just like kind of sitting in there, being in there and I'm like, mm. and I'm thinking about my future. This is now, this is the first time in my life I ever like, I'm like giving thought to the yeah. future. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause I was always like just survival, you know, in the moment. So now I'm thinking like, what do I, I'm about to graduate. It's probably like April, maybe about two months out of graduation, mm-hmm. right? So I think I am 18 now too. That's the crazy part because that's what made me start thinking like that. And then let me, I'll touch on it in a minute. <laughs> uh, so I remember being in this class and I'm just thinking thoughts like, damn, do I want to go to like, because I knew I wasn't going to like no four year. Anything I would have did was like, what they refer to as junior college yeah. and go play, you know, two year football, but school was never really my thing. Like in high school, I wasn't like in no regular classes or nothing. Like I was kind of just, like I said, getting by, you know, yeah. um, they wanted to put me in regular classes. They was like, we think you could, you know, we don't, you don't need to be in here. And I'm like, hey, yes, I do. <laughs> Cause I wasn't trying to do no homework. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I ain't trying to do no homework or none of that. Cause I know myself, I know right. I'm not the type that's going to sit down, study, you know, I'm not doing all that. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's just what it is. So I remember, I'm like, dang. And the thoughts, I can give you the thoughts that was in my mind that I was thinking when I was thinking about my future. I was like, okay, you can go play football, right? Mm-hmm. Or you can you can go hard with this hustling thing. And remember I told you earlier in the episode, like, when I go hard, I go hard. Like, yeah. I don't play. I don't do none of that. I get to it. So I knew that about myself. I did know that. Uh, kind of. I'm like, so I remember calling my homeboy 
right? And he was the one I was like, he was like one of the main ones I was hustling with, getting money mm-hmm. with or whatever. And I had, I kind of felt bad because I showed him certain things. Like he showed, like he had put me on, like show me how to like what weed and all that. I had put him on with the dope game. That's a whole <laughs> different market. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> you know, fiends to come knock on your mama door, like while your mama mm-hmm. in the living room, like, you know what I mean? So I had, you know, called him. I'm like, bro, look, bro. I'm like, I'm done with this, bro. Like, cause I'm like, I wanted to go. Play. I'm like, and then I remember I had a home, another homeboy. He was playing football and everything. I had friends that kind of like was already paving the way. They was like yeah. college programs, getting scholarships. So I had a mentor in high school. I'll talk about in a minute. Um, uh, you know, they was kind of like, so I, I, I seen good stuff. Just like how I said, I seen right. the dude come through in the baby blue bins. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I also have friends that was uh, doing some positive because all my friends was older than me. Okay. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so they have already like, um, I've always hung out with like either older people or like younger people, mm-hmm. but like nobody ever really my age. So all my friends are older than me. They went to college, you know, playing football and all that. So that was like inspiration for me. I'm like, yeah. ooh. You know what I'm saying? Like, naturally, you're going to adapt to, like, who your circle is. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so that type of energy started to outweigh, like, the negative. You know what I mean? Um, so I called my homeboy. I'm like, man, I'm done. I'm good. And he was like, man. He like, man, what? What you took? Because he he knew he was going to jump off the porch. But like we said, it's like, it, you know, the type of communities we come from, it's like, if you don't got nothing, you know what I mean? You're going to. Yeah. So he knew he was going to jump off the porch. And he was like... I'm like, bro, I'm I'm done with this, bro. I gotta, tr- I didn't, I don't know if I said I gotta try something different, but in my mind, I was like, you can stay, you can do that, but that's gonna come with X, Y, and Z. So I kind of like yeah. went into the future in my mind, same principles and things that I do now when I'm visualizing for certain lifestyle things that I want, doing meditation or just in general. Um, but I did it at that moment. I said, uh, I said, this is probably going to happen. That's probably going to happen. Yeah. Man, let me try this football thing. And then, I, like I said, one of my other homies was like, bro, if you take that same energy that you got with that, what you're doing with that and put it into some positive, bro. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can you can make a way. With the, he was talking about football. Like, you can make a way. Oh, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay. So then I started to lock 18. I started locking in. Um, but I had a mentor in high school. Uh, and he was from my neighborhood too, right? Um, and I think it's important for uh, young brothers and sisters to have like heroes, people that's older yeah. than them, that's you know can do something that can show them something different. So my mentor was like totally kind of like opposite for me. So we was from the same neighborhood, but he was like he, you know, he was like in the whole college thing. You know, he had worked for like this college program, and this college program I had got in in high school, like my junior year. I was like shocked that I got in, but it was one of them situations. Like you, we talked about, like they kind of yeah. took a chance on me. I told them my story, not like how I'm telling you now, but they knew I was, they knew my story, yeah. you know? Yeah. So they gave me a scholarship, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, but my mentor, like he had helped me like with financial aid, you know what I mean? He showed me something different, yes. you know what I mean? Like, you know, he wanted me to really do like the college thing. So for me, I'm not going to sit here and lie and be like, oh, college was like, nah. <laughs> I went to college for football and people say, yeah. what was your major? Football. Like, oh. <laughs> that, that was my major. Like, and I'm being serious. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed the different experiences I had on the different levels that I played, but yeah. nah, fo- football was like the reason why I even stepped foot on a college campus. So I had to figure something out. Like, you know, we refer to it as finesse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. I knew how to do certain things in the classroom, but it was certain stuff where it's like, all right, no, yeah. math that ain't you know what I'm saying I gotta <laughs> so football then I went to a community college over here in San Francisco mm-hmm. um, called San Francisco City College it was like one of the top programs you know what I'm saying so I graduated that was like one of the top programs for as far as football but it didn't work out there for me so then I went over to Oakland I went across the bridge to this spot called Laney so I know about now like certain things it's like I talked about how my pops had me running on the heels and stuff mm-hmm. at five, right? And me and my older brother. So when I went to City, City was like the Alabama of junior football, you know, Alabama of but of junior college football. Yeah. So it brought that work ethic out of me again. Mm-hmm. And I was young, 
I'm still young. I'm still young. But, <laughs> wait a minute. But I was 18. I was a fresh 18. Yeah, 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 yeah man. I was, you know what I'm saying? So I was a fresh 18 years old, and I was mm-hmm. still kind of hot headed. I was. I knew I was kind of done with like street stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I was still kind of hot headed. I was. I wasn't confident. Yeah. The confidence I thought I was. It was more cockiness. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I was trying to prove something over there. Like, man, you got to swim with the big dogs now. So all that kind of led to, you know, and some other factors as well led to me um, not being a part of that program and not making the team over there. So I had a homeboy that went to Laney, which is Laney College in Oakland. Um, so I went over there for like the last two years. And over there, it was like a different energy because I was still staying with mom. So I had to, it's no like dorms or nothing. So one thing about junior college on any for any sport and the ones who know no like <laughs> nobody go now you 18 you 18 nobody going to hold your hand like you got to get up and like you got to really but that kind of worked for me because I've always been what's the word I'm looking for uh self initiated like I always knew how to like go and get it like yeah. without <clears throat> without like really you know, having somebody to have to push me or pull me, like, I just know how to go do it. Like, so I'm on a bus and bark every day, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, you know, like bus and train. And you couldn't really miss no days because it's like, I, I think I did that, like, really on purpose, like, like just show up every day, and you know, just yeah. show up because I know myself, I'm like, if I don't, force myself to like be all the way involved in this then i'm gonna probably you know start to wander and look somewhere else so (laughs) but in my mind i never i loved football at this point like it was a it was a passion for me i'm seeing success in that field in that world my thing was just about um i always wanted to go to like this big time college like uh, one of my dream schools was arizona state you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. so like I would be like working, like I was like a like a hermit, sort of like mm-hmm. how I've been like in my in the kind of these years now, like anti not antisocial, but no social life. So for me, I I know about sacrifice, like I yeah. know about. But that's what football taught me. Football taught me sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? Discipline. You got to be tough. You know what I mean? Because when I got to Laney, me I'm coming from a community where, you know, it's a a hand it's a handful of us. In this in the city I grew up in, but we surrounded by like wealthy, rich Europeans and other cultures. So you know, I get the lady. They coach. You know, they try to like throw me in the fire, not knowing like, bro, you gotta stop playing with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> they thought they was like feeding me to the wolves or like trying oh, wow. to like, bro, listen, stop, stop playing, bro. <laughs> you know so. Um, you know, Laney had taught me a lot, you know, um, so I had played football. I did two years, well, really three years in the whole junior college era. Um, and then the time came for like, now it's like, I'm done playing, uh, football at the two year. So now I'm just like, um, now it's like, it was like what do we refer to as like recruiting process, different schools come in, all the schools from like the big schools to the small schools, mm-hmm. they come in and they trying to get players, this, that, and the third. Um, and two things, I wasn't academically, I wouldn't even have been academically eligible to uh, go like to a big time school because I can never mm-hmm. pass certain math classes. Um, two, like I was so discouraged like mm-hmm. at Laney because things didn't really go the way how I wanted it to go, like football wise for myself. You know, one thing, my thing is like, and I probably should have said this earlier. If you give, well, two things. If you give, well, this is the first thing. A person can be passionate about something and good at something, Mm -hmm. but if they get discouraged, right? If they lose any type of confidence, right? Then they cannot perform at their best. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's what happened to me. Like I was discouraged. I didn't have that, like, you know, that I didn't have certain things in me at that point, but that, I knew that was all a part of the divine yeah. plan. Like it wasn't meant for me to go to this, you know what I'm saying? Like my journey and my route is what it is and what it was. And now looking back at it, I can see why, <clears throat> like I said earlier, um, I can see why certain chains of events happen. Yeah. So, um, uh, 
you know, the second thing I want to say is if you give, and I probably should have said this way earlier, if you give, you could take the most roughest individual boy or girl from the one of the, some, from the roughest areas. If you give them something to be passionate about, if you give them a gift, or if you expose them to certain things, you just extended their years in life by 50 plus years. Cause you know, we, we grew up in neighborhoods where, you know, kids die young, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Some people don't even make it to 18. Yep. Right. So, so um, I remember being at the house one night, it was probably around like December and like me and all my boys at the school, we like cracking jokes, like, oh, you going to this kind of school, you know, you going to, you go get the call from this type of, you know, that type of stuff. Right. So uh, <laughs> I, I remember uh, being at the house late night, I'm like sitting on the floor, like, like, you know what I'm saying? My life is really like a movie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my life is like a movie. You know, if they made a movie about my life, it'd be a classic. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so I remember sitting on the floor and then uh, the guy who recruited me, it was a school, small school in Kansas. Mm -hmm. It was referred to as like an NAIA school. So he called me and at, around that era, around that time, like when you get like weird area codes popping up on your phone, you answer because you know nine times out of ten, like yeah. it's recruiting season. You know what I mean? So yeah. um I remember the coach, I seen some weird area code pop up. It was like it was a nine one three area code. So I answer and he like, Hey, this is coach da 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 da. Um I'm I'll be down there at Laney tomorrow. I think was it tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. Um or the next day, I don't really remember. But he was like, I'll be out there, Laney. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to meeting with you. And it was some other guys too in the room with me too. So the coach came down, you know, he's sitting in the room with a bunch of us, you know, we in there laughing, really just like laughing, playing, not really taking it serious, kind of like, cause we thought it was kind of funny or whatever, like, <laughs> but yes. uh, it was, yeah, 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 <laughs> but you know, it was some about, out of all that though, it was some about like, you know, you know, when you get that feeling, like, you know, it's just like some about uh the energy was some about is he left just enough like you yeah. know what i'm saying to make me like when he left i ended up calling him not right away um i think i you know wanted to see some more schools and stuff like that so like my thing is like this <laughs> i'm gonna go i'm gonna always follow uh I, or I, I should say this i should word it like this i'm at a point or i'm in the process of learning and i kind of always done this to it's a certain feeling like with music right when you hear a certain mm -hmm. song it sometimes it just touch you and then certain music don't touch you so certain um situations in life and things um just kind of had like that feeling over you sometimes you know when to kind of even if you don't know all the details you know like uh maybe i need to get this thing a shot or maybe i need to you know, we don't, we you know call that, what you call yeah we call that the sermon of the spirit Okay, yeah, there you go, the sermon of the spirit, you know. So that sermon of the spirit came, <laughs> you know, and it and he told me to make that call, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and he told me to make that call. So I had called him, and at that point in my life where I was, I was like, I didn't know really what the future who I knew I wasn't going to school for school. I'm like, I'm right. like, I, I got to go somewhere. That was really my mindset too. Like, I got to go somewhere. I got, I want to get out of my neighborhood. Like, you know what I'm saying, like. Like, just give me the opportunity. Like, you know, and one of my favorite sayings is doors open doors. So if you can just get through one door, yeah, and you can get through the next door. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah. I always like to say doors open doors. So I'm like, look, I don't know what can And I wasn't afraid to leave the house. I mean, I was going at 13 years old. I would already been out the house for two years. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you wasn't scared not, to go yeah, yeah, yeah. hundreds that was of nothing. miles? Yeah, nah, not really to go to camp. Nah. Um, okay. Yeah, nah. So <laughs> Great. I was I was ready to go because my my I come from a neighborhood where it's sink or swim. You yep. know, you know what I'm saying? Sink or swim. So for me, this was like bonus points. And for I, personally, I don't think really maybe besides myself, nobody ever don't it, like didn't expect certain stuff from me. Like you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like if I I always like to say one thing I respect about my mom is she always had this thing like look. If the police ain't kicking in my door, if y'all not out here doing crazy stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I'm cool. That was her energy. Like, I'm good with that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
That's it. I don't care if y'all are on the sideway picking up trash for a living. Like, as long as y'all safe. Yeah. Police ain't kicking in my door. We good. Like, I don't <laughs> care if you go work at a grocery store. Like, that's like that would have been like success. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because we alive. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you know, you know how many so-called black women and lost their sons and to yeah. violence, this, that, and the yeah. third. Like, you know, so that was like my mom whole thing. So so for me, and that was kind of like an energy that was like in me too. Like anything I do is extra. Like every everything I do is like extra because I you know and it's not like yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's still here. <laughs> it was really no pressure. Like we didn't grow up in a home where bombs was like you going to Harvard or you yeah, gotta be you gotta this go or to that. College, you gotta what? Go. Mama, <laughs> you know. So my dad was a little bit different as far as okay. uh, well, you know. Uh, he always told me that I had to get a good job. So I got to go okay. to school. And I got to get a job, good job. Yeah. Right. Um, with my brother, my brother played football. So, okay. so you know what's up. And he was, man, that boy was cold. Yeah. He was something else. Yeah. Um, but he played football for the park. So um, he would play for school, but he didn't want to play for school. He wanted to play oh, for the park. Oh, they had like leagues? Yes. Oh, they had wow. leagues okay. at the park. And so um, he was he was so good. There was colleges tr- coming to the park. Wow. To see my brother, they wanted wow. him in their school, <laughs> and I think for him, it probably was the same thing where he's like, "I'm not really a school dude. I can't yeah. do the school. I mm-hmm. could play the ball, but yeah. so I really think." And then he was in the same thing. He was in a in the game and everything. I think that because he got intimidated by mm-hmm. the school aspect school. of it, yeah, that he didn't go. I mean. This boy was awesome. Mm-hmm. Like when I tell you they had people, everybody knew who he was. Wow. Everybody there was he <sighs> left uh school. I think he just dropped out of school around I think like 10th grade. Wow. There was other high schools that was trying to get him to come to their high come school. To their school, yeah. Wow. And then when the recruiters started coming from the colleges, they was just like, We can get you in this program, you'll mm-hmm. get a GED. You can get in this program that I help you, wow. like so they can recruit him and get him. Wow, they got a whole system down there. Yes, they had like everything. My dad was he was just so happy. He was like, "Yeah, he probably he wanted him to go to Southern. He didn't want him to go to LSU, okay. but he was like, if he go to LSU, that's fine. He yeah. wanted him to go to Southern. Southern Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know about it. He wanted to go to Southern, but um. <clears throat> He my my dad always said, My baby gonna play for the Saints. My baby gonna play for the Saints. That's right. That's what he wanted to do, play for the Saints. And yeah. um, but my brother ended up getting in some trouble. He went, did some time. Yeah. And about maybe five, six years after that, is when Reggie Bush came out on the Saints and everybody was looking at my mm. brother like that was you. dude. Yeah. Like like when we saw Reggie Bush, we was like just looking at him. Wow. Like, man. Wow. It was yeah. just it was crazy. And like yeah. um, I know everybody have their own path and and mm. you know, he was a game too. I believe that football was God's way of saying, Hey, I need you to slow down. I right. need you to get focused. Mm. This is these are these are the things that can happen for you if right. you just get focused. If you leave all the rest of that stuff alone, get focused, That's right. get destruction. Like we had, even though we were raised by my dad, mm-hmm. we had be inside before the street lights come on. Like mm. we still had a structure. Even everybody in the neighborhood, anybody could whip you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Anybody could send you home. Yeah. So we still had some structure, but mm. there was also that wandering like mm. you said you got you got that leeway too wow. so you know he got in the game and everything and i i believe god was saying hey i got something better for you i just need That's you right. to focus on this because sure. one one hour he'll be walking down the street you know mm. what he's doing mm. next hour he'll be at the park playing <laughs> football and it's like everybody knew who he was everything mm. when he got he bought a brand new baby blue infinity. So when you said the baby blue, 
Two bins. <laughs> yeah, you know what's That's going why on. I laughed. He bought a baby blue mm-hmm. infinity, and it was so crazy that nobody knew who he was, and his car got shot up. Oh wow! He drove that beautiful baby blue infinity. It was brand new. Mm. He drove it in the hood. He had just got it, and because they didn't know who he was in that car, wow. that his car got mm-hmm. shot up. Damn. And I said, let me tell you something. <laughs> This ain't it. Yeah. This ain't it. But he ended up, you know, getting in some trouble. But now I will say he has completely turned everything around. Um, His peace, yeah. Like he completely turned everything around. He's a married man. He got seven kids now. Oh, that's peace. Like um, he's yeah. a contractor. Um, he's yeah. he's a, he does a lot of amazing things. Like that's but, peace. Um, Every time I hear you talk and you share your experiences, I always, I'm, you just put me in the mind of thinking of my brother. Yeah. And I'm like, I keep telling him, and he, he agrees because he told me the same thing. Um, God had to sit you, sit you down. He didn't, mm. he tried to give you that, hey, listen up. I'm, I'm telling you, you got to, yeah. but you didn't listen. So he had to sit you down and sit you in a place where you couldn't go nowhere. Nowhere. All you had to do. All you could do was sit and think mm, and listen yeah, yeah. and talk to him and get to know him. And by getting to know him, you got to know you. That's peace. That's right. And I'm like, mm. we used to be on him like, oh, my God. Wow. But it and had, to be, it had to be a little bit for him, too, to say, <clears throat> dang, I'm looking at Reggie Bush, and that could have been me. Yeah. And that's what everybody was thinking. It was like, boy. Wow. Wow. That been you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but man, it's good he turned it around though. You know what I'm saying? Because so many yeah. young brothers, like they don't turn it around. Like you know what I'm saying? And we just really just young. Like we not, you know, it's not until we get older that was like we start to think differently. You know, our minds develop more. But at that age, sometimes, yeah. you know, it's like, but that's peace that he turned it around for sure. Yeah. Wow. Hi everyone. Join the Kingdom Fanatics community, get exclusive content, green room access with our guests, and more. Visit our website at whogodsays.com. Like and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We greatly appreciate your love and support. To find all information on joining our community, being a guest on the show, donating on our PayPal donation page, and more. Visit us at whogodsays.com. Now back to the show. Now we call him a deacon. He's like, oh. Yeah, for sure. There you go. Yeah, that's (laughs) right. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's right. Yeah, for sure. Good is in all of us. You know what I'm saying? I want to ask you this about your um your meditation and having a Mm -hmm. growth mindset. Mm -hmm. Um so I know that you use art and everything to express yourself. And mm-hmm. also as a part of your profession. When you say growth mindset, what are like the layers that you use that layers or steps that can help somebody else to enter into growing themselves and like getting out of this, hmm, how should I put this? You said box. Getting out of this box right. <laughs> that other people may want to put you in. How do you mm-hmm. go about that? Like, what are some things that you can do? Well, I, I would say um, the first, and when I say artist, I, I you know, I feel like my my nature is just artist. So, like right now, this is a, everything I've been doing. This is an art to me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Through my yeah. algorithms, hacks, you know. Yeah. But uh, to answer your question, uh, <laughs> uh, well, the first thing I would um, tell an individual to do is think about what it is that they do want to do. That's the, that's the first step. So although, right, we might be in a situation where we may be in this box or we're at this point of our life, Mm -hmm. the first thing I would tell an individual to do is think about what is it that you want to do? And you, a person may say, well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So I would say, well, what are the things that you enjoy? What are some things that you naturally enjoy doing or some things that you would do 
without getting paid for it. A whole bunch of amounts of money, right? Like you, you're doing a podcast. I'm sure you have a passion for it, a love for it, right? I'm sure you're still growing into it, right? Yep. Myself, podcasting, meditation, right? Certain things I do with uh, in the 3D world space, right? So I would tell an individual, because write down the things that you enjoy. Make a list, one through 10, one through 15, because this is, and I'm saying this, I'm doing it like in these micro steps because that's important because nine times out of 10, the things that you enjoy naturally doing without getting paid for. So you might say, I like helping people, mm-hmm. right? And it can be big, you know, kind of like uh, big picture words like that. I like to help people. Um, well, I like to play the piano, mm-hmm. right? Or I like to sing or whatever. I'm just using this as an example. Yeah identify those things, write it down. Cause nine times out of 10, the things that you naturally enjoy, the things that just naturally get you going, right. It's the things where that's tied into your purpose and who you are. Yeah. Right. Then you might say then you might make another list, right? You might say, what are some things that I'm naturally good at? Now that, that takes some uh, solitude into, like you said, go to a place where you can think and say, what is, or excuse me, what are some of my greatest qualities? Because a person may be great at uh, public speaking or just a natural. They don't, they can, you can put them in front of a room of 10,000 people and they don't get nervous. Mm-hmm. Right. So that would be the first thing, right, is to identify what it is that you want to do. Like I talked about, you know, 18 years old, I had to think about like, dang. I have to, you know, be mindful and think like, what is it that I want to do beyond like where I am right now? And I've had to do that on a lot of occasions, right? In my yeah. life. Yeah. Um, so that'd be the first thing. The second thing I would tell an individual to do is, okay, what type of adjustments, even if it's micro steps, even if it's baby steps, like what type of things can I do? Like what type of adjustments can I do right now? Yeah. Right. You might say, oh, I want to uh, become a lawyer or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just using an example. Obviously, you can't just jump out and do that right now. Right. Right. You know, but like you talked about the kids and the children. So if we can create a message now. If we can create a certain energy now that can hit the next generation. And it's never too late for nobody. Let me put right. that out there. That can grab the next generation. Then they already prepared. Yeah. Right. Um, and what, what was what was it? <laughs> she got to remind me of the question. <laughs> what was the, I get to talk. I'm sorry. I get to talking. I wrote it's a question, okay. but what was the second part of that question? Um, just how would you mm-hmm. how would you advise them <laughs> on getting out of the box? Like if someone oh, okay. else put you in a box, you know how oh, people would say, you. "Oh, like you're bad. That's why we put oh, you in a box. You, you ain't gonna you. do this because okay. of that." You know when people place you in their own box. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. what the first what the first thing is just. When somebody try to put you in a box, sometimes you got to, it depends on where you, that individual may be at. So mm-hmm. at times when people try to put me in a box, I've always had this internal feeling like of rebellion. Like, no, that's not the case. Yeah. Because yeah. somebody can try to say this about you. Oh, you're a bad person. Mm-hmm. Or no, you're going to go here and you're going to do this. Or you go- F- always follow your heart. Step one. Yeah. always follow your heart. So the whole world can be going right. If your heart telling you to go left and left is not a bad route, then go left. Yeah. That'd be the first thing I do. Cause in this, in this game of life, you gotta, if, to chase your heart and to do things that's that, that your heart tell you to do. And your not sometimes not our mind too. That's all a part of it. But at the same time, you gotta, you gotta understand when you're going against the grain, and sometimes the grain can be your parents, mm-hmm. sometimes the grain can be society, sometimes the grain can be a school, your school system. Yeah. When you're going against the grain, you have to be willing to go against the grain and stand on going against the grain and understand that, yeah, there's going to be some challenges and some highs and some lows of going against the grain. But my thing would be like, how bad do you want to get to point B? to point C or from point A to point B. So first thing, going back, follow your heart, right? First, Mm -hmm. and then to start to take the baby steps towards, well, this is not, if you're in a position to do that, right? 
Now, to get out of that box, you got to literally get out of that box. Right. And sometimes that's hard. That can be a challenge because. You know, you can sometimes people may disown you or look at you a certain way. Yeah. Understand that you're going to have to deal with all the backfire and the backlash that come with that. So for me, like certain things, certain decisions that I made in my life and, and I still continue to make, I was willing to sacrifice uh, my social life, yeah. my family life, right? Mm -hmm. I'm willing to, I'm not, I wasn't willing, I'm still willing to sacrifice my, my social life, yeah. friendship, love life, financials, right? Roof over my head, right? Because I want to be where I want to be more bad than I want to be or that I care about what anybody is talking about. Now, let me mind you, that's not an easy state to get to, right. but it just starts with the small steps. Like I said, identifying where it is that you want to be because your worth is on those words that you write on that piece of paper. Yeah. I'm good at because can't nobody take that from you. That's internal. I'm a poet. I like to write. I like to sing. I like to build. I like to create. I like to take scraps or whatever, whatever your thing is. And I like to build because sometimes those little things right there is something that can change the whole world or have an impact on the whole world or inspire somebody to do something. Right. Next thing I say, you like birds do, you got to just fly. Sometimes right. you just got to get out that nest and you got to fly and surround yourself. Right. We live in a world now where, you know, we got the internet, yeah. YouTube, this, that, and the third. It's like, there's really no excuse. And I say that because if I'm sure you're a person of faith, right? Yep. I'm a person of faith, right? So if you believe in, excuse me, understand that sometimes you, we're not going to always know the answers and it's going to be scary. It's going to be challenging. <laughs> it's going to be hard. You know what I mean? But that's what come with it. God going to. He going to test you on your faith. He going to test you on where he you say you want to be. Oh, you say you want this? I'm going to put you to the fire and I'm going to leave you there. Because one thing about uh, God, he know the limits. Yeah. <laughs> he know what we can handle and can't handle. He know how much pressure to put on you, right? He know how much challenge to give you. He know how much this, that, and the third to give you. You know what I mean? Second thing I say you got to now you got to start. We have to have tools in our life. So look for things in your life that um, and I hope I'm, I, ho I hope I'm answering your question yeah. correctly, because sometimes I, I kind of spin off and um, look for tools and things that can assist you on your journey, because you're going to need uh, tools while you, you know, sometimes and then don't get it wrong. It ain't always just all bad. This, that, and the third, yeah. like, no, but it is, you know, it do get rocky. <laughs> you know what I mean? It can get rocky. So. I think in order to go against the grain, when somebody try to put you in your grain, use that as motivation. But at yeah. the same time, one lesson I had to learn in my life, do it with an open heart. Because sometimes we can, you know, do it with so much like like this revenge thing or like yeah. that you block your own blessings, that you block your own self. Like, nah, and then you might reach that point, but then you still not truly internally satisfied. So I say, one, do what make you feel good. To use certain things and tools, put yourself in environments, right? Even if it's uncomfortable, like put yourself like, I can always do this, like getting on the cam, recording and talking, knowing this going to get shared out into the world. Like, but this is something that I want to be where I want to be more. And I want to express, I should say, who I am and be who I am through certain passions and things that I'm doing more than I care about, like little surface and mundane things, you know? Um, and like I said, put yourself in environments. Sometimes you got to separate yourself. So God's question to you is, you say you want to, what are you willing to give up? What are you willing to sacrifice? Yeah. And then understand you got to go through your initiation process. I'm going to initiate you, right? Yeah. I'm going to put you through a certain course, a certain route to get you, you know, to where you want to be. So um, if I had to sum that all up, what I just said, I, I would say, you know, um, you got to go against the rain. You got to dig deep. You got to be a beast. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta be a beast. And then, and and it's okay to get assistance and get help. Um, oh yeah. Use the yeah, use the sources and tools around you as as well. Yeah.
And yeah. I like that you said you do it with an open heart. Yeah, a, got to. A lot yeah. of times when people try to place you in a box and they put their, their labels, because mm. a lot of times people operate out of their own insecurities. Mm, so, you, yeah. you know, they will put their labels on you. Yeah. And I would say don't get discouraged, mm. um, especially if that's not your original feeling of yourself. Right. You know, if I'm real quick, I'm just telling you, when I was little, mm-hmm. I wanted to be a, a singing actor, right? Mm. Like Whitney Houston. That's right. Yeah. I said, I heard, yeah, my, I um, was about my that. dad was in love with Whitney Houston, right? Yeah. And um, uh, I sung uh, How Will I Know. I was singing that song to my daddy. Yeah. And me and my daddy Come was singing on. back I and forth. I know. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, um, <laughs> we watched The Bodyguard and mm-hmm. I told him I wanted to be a singer like Whitney Houston. And my dad mm-hmm. said, oh, well, Whitney Houston, that's my baby. You ain't going to sing it like my baby. Now, he was joking. But mm-hmm. that hurt my feelings, and it also discouraged me because I was like, "Well, okay then." So, you know, I can't really sing like Whitney Houston. So, right. you know, so I kind of left all of that mm-hmm. back then when I was a child. Fast forward, I have a ten year old, and he's like, he wanted to be an actor. So I put mm-hmm. him in classes. He took um, um, these acting and modeling classes uh, with a mm-hmm. company called Barbizon. He has a agent yeah. now so he's yeah. done like national commercials and everything and my whole takeaway from that was my dad did not have bad intentions right he did not want to put me down or anything he just made a joke but right. self-consciously right i wasn't already a hundred percent saying oh i can sing you know yeah now i probably would have preferred him to say oh yeah baby you got this go ahead and do it yeah, that would have sure. boosted my confidence. I probably yeah. would be a singer right now. Yeah. But because he said, oh, you ain't going to sing it like Whitney Houston. That's my baby. I got discouraged. Yeah. I got self-conscious about what well, maybe I can't really sing. Mm. Maybe, you know, uh, like one lady said, and my, my grandma used to take me to church. Everybody can sing. Everybody don't sound good. So I was mm. like, oh, okay. So maybe I'm one of those people who don't sound good, but everybody can sing, right? And Mm -hmm. so I would tell everybody, um, don't get discouraged, especially if it's not something that you are originally feel about yourself. Because originally I was like, oh, I can sing. I'm going to be a singing actor because I love acting. I want to be an actor that can sing, not a singer that acts. Because I always felt like singers that act, you can't really, they can't act. (laughs) That's right. That's right. So I'm like, I want to be an actor that can sing. And um, don't get discouraged. Don't, don't get discouraged. Um, and I would say, like you said, find those resources and tools and always know that you can't do everything by yourself. Life is not meant for you to do it by yourself. So yeah. they are going to need help. Yeah. There are, there's going to be people who know more than you. For we sure. don't know everything. People know more than you. They have the expertise that can help you. Um, it's just about finding that person who has the right heart posture, the person Man. who's there who wants to help and who doesn't want um to use you and manipulate you that's so, right um definitely so yeah i mean it's a journey life is a journey <laughs> yeah. um the last question i want to ask you before i let you go and it sounds like people outside cutting my grass um and before you ask that question i just want to say yeah no, i definitely seek help because i wouldn't mm-hmm. be right if i don't mention my mentor like my mentor yeah. man if it wasn't for him i met my mentor when i was 22 i wouldn't be like probably half of who I am you know what I mean like for real for real so definitely seek um whether it's a mentor or, you know any type of group setting or anything like yeah. you know not for sure not definitely that's that play a major a major role yeah yeah no I yeah, know I'm a Christian I would say seek first the kingdom of God yeah yeah for sure yeah do your if you need help with that I'm here to help with it <laughs> yeah for um, sure but I want to ask you, what do you think is your purpose? So my purpose, um, and that's kind of, I ain't going to say it's a tricky question, but <laughs> my purpose, I'm going to answer it based off where I am now and mm-hmm. where I see certain events. So my purpose is to come into this life um, 
I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna build it up for you. Um, express who I am through my different um, characteristics, mm -hmm. right? Another part of my purpose is to um, share who I am to the world, yeah. whether that's through, not whether, through my um, passions, um, through information, right? Everything that I'm doing now from the podcast, everything I'm doing from when I'm in the metaverse, like uh, another part of my purpose is to play my percentage and role in uplifting fallen humanity. Another uh, aspect of my purpose is to um, be an inspiration, not just for the world, but I should say my purpose for myself. And that's your purpose nine times out of 10, <laughs> your purpose for yourself. What's your purpose for yourself? Is to uh, be an inspiration for the next generation. Or if I can just tell somebody or somebody can get inspired off something I'm saying, and I didn't even get into that. Yeah, uh, you know, I might have. We only might have touched on about twenty five percent of it. But <laughs> uh, you know, my fool's journey. If you ever want, if you want to get the whole story, my fool's journey podcast on all your major streaming platforms, uh, 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 Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that. Yeah. But um, so yeah, part of my purpose is, and I'm still learning my purpose because as we, I as we, it's things I don't know about myself right now, right. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's things I'm still learning. So as I continue to learn, right? Oh man, oh you have a a, a thing for writing in a certain way, a creative writing. I'm just using that as an example. Yeah. Right? You learn like, okay, I can take that. How can I put this out to the world? So for me, another part of my purpose is be the best version of myself I can be at all times. Like, nah, yeah, I got low days, I got high days, I got days where I'm just like somewhere in the middle. I prefer to be somewhere in the middle because that's the middle pass. That's the balance between extreme and really high low. So if it's something I can say and I can be an inspiration to somebody, then peace. If not, then peace because I'm going to still be who I am <laughs> anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, right. um, yeah, part of my purpose is just to be who I am, be an inspiration, and learn as well because you yeah. can't, I say I'm a teacher, but I'm a, I ain't, I ain't got no credential. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, I'm a teacher because I'm willing to learn and then put yeah. share and put certain things out into the world. So um, just sum, sum it up, like I said, in a couple of key words, my, my purpose is to play my percentage in uplifting fallen humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> what you feel like your purpose is? Who? Ain't yeah, nobody never asked me to have whatever on, time well, I hey, ask you got the right what their yeah, yeah. is. They never yeah. come yeah. back to ask oh, me. Yeah, I'm gonna, hey, I do the podcast thing too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm in the driver's seat, but we can switch. I can't hop in the, you know, I can become the driver Ooh. for a minute too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You got the, you got the right one. <laughs> we might have to do a part two too around, you know what I'm saying? Like we might have to double back after this because. You know, I still I still feel like I cook in the kitchen, you know what I mean? <laughs> but now, nah, I mean, well, yeah, what you feel like as part of your purpose is based Ooh, off, of, you know, um, based off so far in your journey? Oh, my gosh. So I do believe that my purpose is going to change, but um, based on what the spirit has shown me about my path, right now, my purpose is to share my spirituality, share the kingdom of God, share my experiences, mm -hmm. um, and win souls for God. Mm -hmm. That's my purpose. Okay. Now, the way that he has me doing that mm -hmm. right now is through the podcast. That's peace, um, yeah. It's powerful. So, and I believe I wanna... that, I don't believe that the purpose will change. I just believe that the avenue is going to yeah. continue to grow yeah. and change. That's right. And I want to commend you on that too. I probably should have said that in the beginning. But I want to commend you on the platform because we need more sisters, you know what I'm saying, out oh, there holding it down for the culture. You know, I like what you're doing. I still got to tap in more to uh, some episodes. I've just been, i been busy lately, but I'm going to definitely, I got you saved in my library. You know what I mean? Y'all make sure y'all tap in. You know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah, no, I commend what you're doing. We, we definitely got to run it back for sure. Maybe we come from a different angle on it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Okay. Well, let yeah. the people know where they can connect with you. Oh, man. Y'all can connect with me on you IG. Have going on coming up. Insta yeah, Instagram. I just dropped the episode today. Uh, Life <laughs> My Fool's Journey Podcast, episode 59. Okay. Uh, li uh, Life Path members. 
So I get into that whole deal. I get into a little bit of everything, astrology, but everything you see on the podcast, all the episodes you see, everything you see as a, rep- a representation of who I am, Yeah. right? And it's also not just a representation of who I am. It's different. It's me. It's really all one just spread out abroad into different pieces. You know what I'm saying? So that's a part of my purpose. I want to spread abroad, you know, different aspects and pieces of myself, you know, just like, you know, so yeah, so my I'm on Instagram. Uh, that's like the main profile that I'm on. IG. I got the IG going up. I'm, I'll be on Twitter, threads, but IG is like my main. That's where, and I'm just, you know, I'm on there. I want, I'm gonna give you my backstory. I'm gonna give you my link. Well, you already got my link to my podcast. Yeah. But I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna give you my backstory link too, though. So I'm gonna okay. share that with you personally. You may, I know you operate off YouTube, you know. So, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you, Jacob, for coming yeah. in. For sure. I know I it's talk a lot. Spending time with me. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Thank you for, man. Thank you for having me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be ready to show up on platforms. Like. That's a part of like like my goals is for this uh, twenty twenty four is to get on more platforms and show up, you know. <laughs> and I, do, am, and, I yeah. am grateful to have you here. I yeah, believe that's that pretty... God has put everyone in my path for a reason. I call Definitely. them divine connections. Thanks yeah. to Miss Laquita, but um, that's yeah, I call them divine connections, and mm-hmm. there is a reason. And whatever that reason is, whatever that impact is, to God be yeah. the glory. That's peace. That's for sure. Well, thank you thank again you. for having me. Shout out to your fan base. Shout out to your uh your fans, your listeners. <laughs> All right, shout out to the to the Kingdom Fanatics. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you again. You're welcome. Have a blessed one. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today on the Who God Says podcast with your host and Kingdom Ambassador. Ty Chandra. Go to whogodsays.com to join the mailing list for episode premieres, upcoming guests, and more. Send in your questions to be a part of the show at whogodsays at gmail.com. And don't forget, join the Kingdom Fanatic community. Until next time, be blessed and also be a blessing.